G'day ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Bitcoin update. I've been warning you guys about a few bearish threats developing for the last few days. I've made two or three videos in the last few days discussing those specific bearish threats and why I'm concerned about them. Now they have developed a little bit here and we have seen a pretty significant drop in the last hour or so down from, you know, we're looking down from 28.3k all the way down to around 26.8k. That's a pretty big drop and we've formed a new kind of triangle formation. We've seen the CPI releases and so we need to discuss quite a lot today. Is Bitcoin in danger is the big question we're asking. I have timed the filming of this video perfectly. We had CPI quite a while ago now, around five or six hours ago, and I was intending on making a video right after CPI, but I actually waited for one simple reason. And it's one simple reason that a lot of people who aren't experienced analysts wouldn't look for, okay? So year on year inflation wasn't bad at all. Year on year inflation was actually 0.1% lower than the market's expectation. The expectation was five, it came in at 4.9, but it's month on month infl inflation that a lot of people don't look at that really made me pause and wait for further price action. The market pumped slightly based on the year on year inflation going down 0.1% more than expected, but the month on month inflation wasn't particularly good. The month on month inflation was actually rising from what it was last month, which is probably a result of the the bank bailouts are probably a result of the, the extra strain in the economy right now in the United States of America. And so I was expecting actually Bitcoin to make a deviation, make a move downwards after that rally. That rally, in my opinion, wasn't sustainable. And hence, I wasn't going to make a video at that point in time. I waited for this drop and this drop has just occurred. I've literally been waiting for hours for it to happen. Waited for a drop, just occurred. And now I'm happy to make a video. And I'm especially happy to make a video because I've seen where this drop has taken us. It has taken us to the bottom of this triangle formation. Bitcoin is not in a good position in the short and medium term anymore. It's not in a good position, okay? It is in now a bearish descending triangle formation. What we had the other day, okay, was it something resembling a triangle like this, okay? And that was, you know, something like that. That was basically a bull flag formation, right? Because we could say that Bitcoin went upwards into that bull flag, consolidated, would break to the upside. As of right now, that bull flag has fallen apart. And I actually see Bitcoin in a bearish uh, descending triangle formation at this point in time, a reversal pattern. I also see on the shorter term charts, a clear double top formation over here and a potential, now it's very ugly with that said, but you know, let's just give it the benefit of a doubt here and say, oh, potential head and shoulders formation. Now again, very, very ugly, but it could very well be something like that. If anything, you know, if we zoom out really long-term daily chart, we could say this is also a rounding top. Look, the point is Bitcoin actually doesn't look strong right now. Now, I've made points in previous videos over the last few days that the long term looks good on Bitcoin. It does certainly look good. This doesn't change the long term structure. But I've also said the medium term is indecisive in the gray area. Now, I actually don't think it looks good anymore. I don't think the medium term looks strong anymore. And there's many reasons for that, but a lot of it's going to be relying on this daily candle close. Now, this daily candle close in six hours is very important for a simple reason, okay? Bitcoin in six hours will be deciding, will be deciding whether it closes below <coughs> the center line of the Gaussian channel on the daily chart. That is a very important level. We have spoken about Gaussian channel daily chart center lines before. Basically, closing above and below the center line of Gaussian channel, you know, generally leads to an, is an indicator of moving through the Gaussian channel. Sometimes it doesn't work out. In fact, we had multiple deviations over here that didn't work out. But you know, generally speaking, when we move through the center line, we move through the channel. We see a more extensive correction. Or if it's going to the downside, you know, from the upside, sorry. When we move through the center line, we see a more extensive pump, right? So the fact of the matter is the center line of the Gaussian channel, especially on weekly chart, but also on daily chart is quite major. And we can see that in the last couple of days here for Bitcoin, specifically the last two daily candles, we have had clear support acting out in the center line of that Gaussian channel. So if we are to lose that center line on this daily candle, that's actually not good news at all. We really don't want to see that occur. There is obviously a chance Bitcoin can get back above that center line and close above, say, 27.5K, in which case Bitcoin has saved itself a little bit in the short and medium term. But if it does close below that center line, it becomes extremely likely that we actually drop below this descending triangle formation and come down for a retest of the critical levels, such as 26.7K, such as 25.2K, which is the really, really important level that we've discussed a lot. And I'll discuss it again in a second here. Um, you know, <coughs> sorry. Another thing that's important is that if we close below the center line of the Gaussian channel, that would also imply a close below, another close below the 50 EMA. And the 50 EMA has very, very clearly acted as a major line of support for Bitcoin. Even if we're looking at the last, say, three, uh, two or three months from March 2023, you know, we can see that before the, the excessive correction over here in March, we saw a, a few days here, three or four days, where we were holding that 50 EMA for support. And even just a couple of weeks ago here on Bitcoin, you know, we saw the 50 EMA catch us 
us on the lows on, on a few occasions. You know, six, six, seven daily candles, we've seen the, the 50 MA act as support. Now, we've lost it now. You know, we've been below it for a while. We've seen two, two daily candle closes below it in the recent couple of days. And seeing a third one would not be good news. Now, obviously, if we get back, back above the Gorgian, we would have saved that. We'd likely close above the 50 MA as well. But, you know, things are looking pretty grim right now. Uh, I'm going to be completely blunt with you in terms of this triangle. Uh, and that's just objective reality. Now, you know, there are things that aren't, you know, there's, there's things that, that could save us here is what I'm saying. You know, this is one of those things is the clear bullish divergence that could be forming here on the four hourly chart. If we're looking at the lower yellow line of this triangle on the, on the RSI here, you know, obviously this daily, this four hourly candle hasn't closed yet, but even if it does, right, we do have a clear bullish divergence forming and we would have a clear bullish support there forming. So perhaps we don't break this triangle to the downside, but you know, the fact of the matter is it is a, it is a descending triangle at this point and that's not good news. And you know, what we're doing within that descending triangle is not particularly promising. I still stand by what I said for the last few days. At this point, nothing is confirmed in the sense that we haven't seen a confirmed breakout yet. Just because we have a descending triangle, it doesn't mean it's going to break to the downside. It doesn't mean it's more likely to break to the downside. That's for sure. But it doesn't mean it's certain. And the fact that it hasn't validated its breakdown yet means it's not valid to say that the charts are bearish right now. It's valid to say the charts are weak. I think weak and bearish are two different things. You can have weakness and you can still move upwards in the same way you can have strength and you can still move downwards. Weakness isn't necessarily bearish and, and strength isn't necessarily bullish. There is a distinction between those two things. Weakness is likely bearish and strength is likely bullish, but bullish and bearish are separate to weakness and strength. Now, I'm, I know that's a, that's a, a very fine line linguistically, but I think it is an important distinction to make because as of right now, there still isn't confirmation in this move. You know, for example, we had weakness over here and that weakness has resulted in correction, but overall it was it was, it was was a bullish thing because we, we saw a healthy correction, we came down, we bounced very strongly. So it was weakness, but the weakness actually resulted in bullish, bullishness. So, you know, again, that, that's an important distinction to make. And the, the overall kind of point I'm trying to make here is that even though Bitcoin is not in the favorable position right now in the short and medium term, it's not confirmed that it's actually in a bad position either. You know, it's not confirmed that it's, that's bearish, it's breaking down, it's moving downwards yet. Now, it could very well do so, and it could very well do so very shortly. Uh, but that's kind of the situation we're in right now. There is a chance, you know, that Bitcoin could be seeing a, a rather, you know, good close within this triangle formation. There's many, many things we need to monitor over the next few days. I think that's the kind of thing you'll, you'll find from this video. You know, we have this kind of, you know, horizontal support zone that's kind of formed from these candle closes here on the 27th of March. And that's sitting around 27,300. We also found that as support during this low over here in April. Uh, and we could find it again as support on this daily candle close. You know, there's a lot that's kind of resting on where exactly we close this daily candle. This daily candle is very, very, you know, very important. We need to be seeing for maximum strength a close above 27.5k. A close below 27.5k would not be good. A close below 27.3k would be very bad. And a close below something like 26.8k, or more specifically 26.7k, which is the start of this green box, would be terrible. Um, you know, overall, that's kind of what we're looking at. There's many, many different layers to it. It's very multi-layered. It's very multifaceted. And so we'd have to... You know, analyze it as it did occur. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> you know, mixed signals right now are leaning more bearish than bullish, meaning leaning more weak than strong. And if we're moving to other time frames, we can really start to see uh, where, you know, when exactly this, these moves will be happening. For example, Ethereum's already broken to the downside, and this is where the bearishness comes in, right? Ethereum's already broken to the downside. So Ethereum could be foreshadowing what's going to be happening with Bitcoin, right? It's had this kind of weird triangle formation with three lines and it's just broken up the downside very recently. Now, it's not a confirmed break because we haven't seen the daily candle close yet. When you're looking at structures that are forming all the way back from, say, January 2023, you need to be seeing daily candle closes, but it's certainly not good news. And total cryptocurrency market gap is exactly the same. It's got a triangle formation here. That was actually a bullish pennant formation. And, you know, that, that was meant to see an apex around the, the start of June. And, you know, that's just broken to the downside as well. Again, it's just a week at this point in time. It's not confirmed, but it's not good news. So I think all of these things could be foreshadowing a bad, uh, you know, rest of the month for Bitcoin, a bad May. Uh, you know, gold's another one, you know, look, we're, we're rejecting from a resistance here. If we're looking at the weekly chart on gold, we can go to the weekly chart and take a look now. You know, we're seeing quite strong resistance being faced by that red box, quite strong resistance being faced by this downtrending yellow line. If we're looking at the DXY, it's kind of the same story, right? We're seeing very strong support. I and mean, the DXY is reverse correlated to Bitcoin. So if this thing goes up, Bitcoin goes downwards, generally speaking. And yes, again, it's not broken out yet, that yellow downtrending line, but it's certainly not looking particularly good. Uh, so that's kind of a reoccurring trend that's going on. Nothing's really confirmed, but nothing's really looking good either. So I think 
we really need to pay close attention to charts over the next few days specifically because you know when it comes to a movement like this it could move very quickly now i've said before i'll say it again 25.2k is the main level we're watching uh in order for anything to change on any sort of medium to long-term scale we need to be uh breaking below 25.2k that's that's for a change to happen so long as we're above that level nothing actually looks particularly bad and nothing's really harmed now you know when i want to say macro scale i don't mean four-year cycle scale for the four-year cycle to remain valid we could go all the way down to bloody one dollar below the bottom now it wouldn't be good and if we did that we'd certainly have sold long ago but the valid the the, the you know validity of the four-year cycle doesn't rest on 25.2k or doesn't rest on 26k it rests on the fact that they're not going to be a new low quite literally but you know for us as traders or as people who have money in bitcoin as investors we are looking at levels before that because we're trying to catch the trend before it happens right so for me personally and this is something i've said over and over and over again I think if we drop below 25.2k, and I don't mean a couple hourly candles, I mean we get a couple daily candle closes, perhaps a weekly candle close black below 25.2k, we are re-entering the range that we saw between June 2022 and March 2023. That's when we really start to look rough. So long as we're above that, we're not in particularly bad waters, but we are showing weakness for sure. And this is something that I've said over and over again. We're showing weakness here. It's not overly confirmed yet, but it is something we need to monitor. It's something we need to keep an eye on. This daily candle close is going to be very important. Now, you know, given the speed of this move, guys, it is important to note as well, you know, I saw uh, in the in the on-chain data earlier today and on exchange data as well, massive amounts of shorts in comparison to longs. So this could be the shorts just playing out uh, and it could not be a reflection of where the long-term price action is going or even medium-term price action is going. We can see how quickly this has moved down. We've moved down from 28.4K all the way down to 26.8K in a very, very short period of time in under an hour. So again, this could be a fake out to the downside. It could just be grabbing liquidity. It could be doing a lot of things. Um, so, you know, this could, this could also, you know, be a reflection, uh, uh, this could also be the start of a big drop. It's kind of hard to see where it's going to go exactly by now. And that's, that's why I'm, I'm being very, very vague about my, what I'm saying right now. But look, what I will say is this, and I said it before, I'll say it again. As of right now, we're still in a triangle formation and we're still above 25.2K. And so nothing really has changed from any sort of, you know, long-term, even really medium-term scale. It's just the shorter term that's looking rough and weakness is showing and stuff is being pointed out. Now, I've said four or five days ago now, I mean, saying all week, actually, there's stuff that is looking concerning. There's stuff that we need to watch, okay? That's what I've been saying all week. There's charts that are looking concerning, warning signs. I made a video four or five days ago with the, the warning signs in the literal title and these warning signs are starting to de develop a bit more now. We do need to keep an eye on them. So again, reiterating my points, I, this doesn't really change anything on a macro scale at, 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 in any way, shape or form, to be honest with you, until we break 25.2K. But these warning signs are starting to progress a little bit further. Perhaps it's all a fake out and perhaps we just moved to the upside. You know, look, if we're looking at something like 28, uh, let's go ahead and take a look actually at another chart here so we can actually show you straight up. You know, and this isn't to give you hope or anything like that or hopium or whatever, but the point is we're looking at something like what we did in the past. We've done this kind of structure before, right? We've formed this kind of head and shoulder structure before. You know, we did it over here in 2019, okay? We 2019, we broke out of 6K. 6K is kind of similar to what 28.6K, sorry, 6K in 2018 was very similar to what 28.6K in 2023 is to us right so what i'm saying is we broke out of that level just like we've done now and we form kind of this almost head and shoulders pattern it looked pretty bad you know we saw some sort of double top there with some sort of rounding top and just out of nowhere against the odds right it clearly wasn't a bullish structure right if anything it was a bearish structure out of nowhere against the odds we just broke to the upside so look, look you know i'm not saying that's going to happen again i'm just saying this is a good example of the fact that weakness doesn't necessarily indicate bearishness. That's just really something to keep in mind. Um, it's not worth jumping to conclusions with things like this. You need to be waiting for breakouts, and that's exactly what we're going to be good doing. So lots of things to look at, lots of things to, to, uh, to monitor for sure, and we will be monitoring them. So I'll catch you back tomorrow. Uh, very important video tomorrow after that daily candle close for sure. Perhaps by tomorrow, I've seen some movement out of a triangle. We don't know. It's going to be hard to say. Uh, I'll say now we've seen very strong volatility. We've seen a very uh, strong bounce from the support in the short term. That's not to say it's going to be particularly bullish or anything, but it is to say that it could you know, sustain us for a little while and consolidate a little more. You know, it's still very early in this triangle formation and the apex of a triangle is actually all the way over here in late June. So mid to late June. So, you know, realistically, we could be consolidating for a decent period of time more, many days, possibly even weeks. It just really depends on what happens in the short term. So we'll keep an eye on it, guys. 
Uh, unfortunately, that's all I can really give you today on the topic. I will also say quickly um, that you know, CPI, uh, this, the next CPI release is actually before the next FOMC release. And so the next CPI release is going to be more important than this CPI release we just had. That's important to note. So 13th of May, that CPI release is coming. And I think just a few days after that, we should be seeing the FOMC. So, uh, sorry, 13th of June. So, you know, in that mid-June period, there's going to be massive volatility. And just coincidentally, right, that lines up with the end of where this triangle is. So perhaps even... You know, and this is just speculation, a bit blind speculation, but given the fact we have FOMC and CPI in that early June region, mid-June region, and the apex of his triangles in that early mid-June region, perhaps even Bitcoin does nothing until mid-June. You know, it's hard to say, but that's just speculation as well. Lots of ideas being thrown out. I hope you found some of them useful. So guys, check out the BitGet exchange if you want a place to trade. This exchange is five times lower fees than Binance. It's non-KYC. I reached out to these guys to get a partnership. They did not reach out to me. And that is a testament to the legitimacy of the exchange. I've actually found it useful in my personal trading life before I even get a sponsorship with them. So I appreciate this exchange. And I, you know, I, I do encourage people to use this exchange. I think it's probably one of the best exchanges on the market. And for that reason, I've linked up with them. We've got a referral link in the description below. You can get a 15% trading fee discount for life by using that link and signing up. Do that if you want to. And then finally as well, uh, Crypto Academy, guys, if you want to learn how to trade, you want to learn how to analyze charts like myself and like Megawell Crypto, who co-created this course with me, you can check out the course to become a trader, 10 unit course. All the information's on the website and you can email us here at cryptoacademycourses.gmail.com to get a full breakdown of what the course is, the price, etc., a visual walk down. Everything you need to make an educated decision will be given for free if you send us an email there, that email address. Check out the website, link in the description below. And finally, guys, the VIP group uh, has been up for, what, seven, eight months now. And just today, if you check our YouTube community post, we had a very, very profitable trade on, I think, I believe it was Jasmine. We had a 200% profit in under eight hours. Great stuff from there from the VIP group. That's just one of many trades we've had. And you can check out our full trading track record from the entire period of the uh, VIP group being active for free using the description link below and check out the joining information if you're interested. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.